multitasking menu, center window, window shelf, app switcher on Super Soldier Serum, keyboard shortcuts on Hulk Serum, widgets unleashed, app library added, quick notes, tag notes, text magnifier-ish, files progress bar, circle, Swift Playgrounds from UI to App Store, Universal Control, and so much more. It's the iPadOS 15 public beta. It supports iPad mini back to G4, iPad back to G5, iPad Air back to G2, and iPad Pro back to the OG. You can get it now, but just remember, beta means beta. So back up before you download, and then let's go. Sponsored by Brilliant. I'm breaking down all the most important features from all of Apple's public betas, and doing a slew of technical deep dives as well. So hit the subscribe button and bell so you don't miss any of them. I'm guessing Apple just ran out of time last year and couldn't bring a well thought out screen size and rotation optimized version of widgets and the app library to both the iPhone and iPad at the same time. And like the Batman, iPhone always wins. So this year, of course, we're getting just exactly that. The thought out big screened version that also sports a new bigger widget size and support for the home screen rotation unique to the iPad and an app library icon right on the dock. Just like the iPhone, you can now hide home pages you're not using and lean on Spotlight and app library for your lesser used apps, even if search and categorization can still be a bit funky at times. There are some new widgets for Find My, Contacts, Mail, App Store, Game Center, and more. So yes, our long national iPad home screen nightmare is now officially over and we can move on to all the really new, new stuff. Now, no, you still can't boot camp into Mac OS on your iPad or run that or Windows for ARM in a virtual machine as interesting, tantalizing even as that may be. Apple is still keeping the iPad uniquely the iPad, but they have seriously improved the multi-windowing experience on iPadOS itself. It's something they've been experimenting with for a few years now and has gone from frustratingly limited to consternatingly fussy and overloaded, but now, now Apple's had another take a pencil into space moment of realization and decided to add a multitasking menu button to every window. And it's just so damn win. Go to an app, tap the button, pick between split view, slide over, and the new center window if it's an option, and you're off and productivizing or creatoring or however you multi do you. It makes it super easy, not gonna say it again, to create app pairs, to change those app pairs. Just touch the multitasking menu button, hold and pull it down then replace the previous app with the next one you want to use. It's so good, I want it on the Mac, like now, now, now. There's also a new shelf mechanic that shows all the open windows for that specific app. It'll disappear when you're working so it doesn't get in your way, but come back again when you tap the multitasking menu button, and then you can use it to quickly and easily just swap into any of those open windows. You can also create and change app pairs right in the app switcher as well, which is great. And you can even use the keyboard for full on multitasking and navigation now, which is greater, like Shakespeare the way it's meant to be done greater. The globe key is even uh, an extra modifier now for even more keyboard options. And when you hold the command button down to see all of your keyboard options, you can even search to find the ones that you specifically need at any given time. So for people who like to keep their hands right on that keyboard, you can do more with it than ever before. In the biggest escalation of continuity ever, if you have a Mac, you can now use it to fully control your iPad as well, up to two of your iPads if you want. It's not sidecar because your iPad stays an iPad. The Mac doesn't take over the screen. You can just keep your hands on your Mac's keyboard and mouse or trackpad to use your iPad as an iPad. I've done a whole entire explainer video on how exactly that all works already, so I'll just link to that in the description. The iPad is also getting all of the same new FaceTime and messages features as the iPhone, including SharePlay. That's the feature that lets you listen to music together or watch shows together or even screen share over FaceTime. I covered all the basics in the iOS 15 video. I'll link to that in the description as well. But the longer form video experience is certainly just much more captivating on the bigger iPad display which also lets you fit 20 people into the new FaceTime grid view. So if you know you and your local revival Hamilton cast want to jam about a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean or whatever, Apple just needs to add broadcasting next. Ditto the new focus modes, which lets you set up customized do not disturb settings for different people and apps, even home screen pages that you can turn on or off from your iPad or any Apple device. Likewise, Safari is getting a slew 
slew of updates that I'll be covering in the Mac OS Monterey video as well. Back to the iPad stuff. Swift Playgrounds is absolutely all about the iPad. New this year is the ability to design in Swift UI, Apple's next generation cross device interface builder. And in the biggest finally in the history of enormous finalies, you can now publish right from Swift Playgrounds to the App Store. In other words, you can finally, finally make iOS apps on iOS. Finally, we live to see it. And yeah, sure, it's not Xcode for iPad, at least not yet, but combined with the new Xcode Cloud, those pieces are falling together and we're getting closer together, I think, than ever before. There is a ton more as well, including all the new accessibility and privacy features, but also some new gaming features. iPadOS or iOS can buffer the last 15 seconds of your gameplay so you can capture your best moves using game controllers, including the newly supported Xbox Series XS and PS5 controllers. There's a new Game Center friend request inbox as well, and Game Center lets you bring in your most recent contacts from messages. Along with live text and translate though, one of my favorite new features has to be quick notes. Apple is just making notes into a system-wide extra dimensional pocket universe. And you can throw in text, handwriting, sketches, whatever you need, even links, which then creates a persistent context for that quick note that you can go back and revisit whenever you want. Even on the web where you can highlight text matching pages to your notes and you can even share them with your friends, family and colleagues and at mention the people that you've shared them with. Quick notes then sync across iPad, Mac, even iPhone and you can find them in your own little pocket universe sure or in the main notes app as well. And I love it, I love it so much. It's like a whole meta commentary layer on the app and web universe. The only drawback is that it's limited to Apple's notes for now, but given how much integration, how integration happy Apple has been lately after their usual year of stress testing, it's not hard to imagine them making it available to other notes providers. All my note taking fingers crossed. If the built-in notes app is your jam though, you can now draw on images, which yes and thank you, and Apple has brought back the magnifier for text editing. It lets you move the cursor position around with your finger and actually see where you are moving it. It's just nowhere nearly as well-crafted or good looking as the magnifier of Eld. So fingers also crossed Apple gives that a little bit more love before release. Also new to notes this year are tags along with a tag browser, smart folders based on the tags, the aforementioned at mentions for collaboration, along with an activity view and highlights to track those collaborations. And that part's not just for notes, but also for reminders, which also gets Siri announcements for reminders for AirPods and improved natural language input. About all it needs now is the ability to machine learn tasks it knows I am just never gonna do and then silently remove them overnight so I don't feel so damn guilty the next day, every day but maybe you could do me a solid, go to Apple and build it in for iPadOS 20. Brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie can get you started. Brilliant is this incredible website and app that teaches you all the fundamentals of algorithms and neural networks, everything from character recognition like in live text to search like Spotlight, but also math and science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, even cryptocurrency and more because it's built on learning while doing and solving real challenges in real time with no memorizing long messy formulas or fact sheets, no tests or grades, just instant feedback that coaches you bit by bit so you can rapidly improve and learn the foundational concepts behind all of the most important new careers and technologies literally before you even realize it. So if you wanna go from using iPadOS to maybe working on it one day, you can get your start with Brilliant and you can do it today. Just go to brilliant.org slash Tony Ritchie or click the link in the description, pick a course and get started now. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. Hit the playlist above or YouTube's personally selected video for you for more on all the public betas, features I didn't have room to cover in this video and a bunch of deep dive videos to come. Just hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.